If you end up in a sprawl position, there are three chokes that you need to know and be able to understand how to apply them and how they intertwine with one another. Because when you're in this position, ideally from a sprawled position, and again, this happens off of a guy shooting on you, trying to take you down. I sprawl as a defense. Ideally, when I'm in this position, best position for me, unless I'm just getting back up to my feet, is to work myself to the person's back, get a seatbelt grip, start working my hooks in, take the person's back, and do whatever you need to do. That's ideal, but again, if you got a guy that's real comfortable on the ground, a real strong guy, maybe you didn't sprawl fast enough and he catches one of your legs, as I'm sitting here trying to work and break free, he's continuously gonna continue to drive into me, try and pull that leg out, and eventually he's gonna work himself up to side control, back control, to mount, and you're gonna be in a world of hell. So you have to understand that when you are in these sprawl positions, Sometimes the best thing that you can do is apply a choke. Now, when you put in any of these chokes, you have two options. You can utilize these chokes with the mindset of, I'm gonna put this person to sleep, or I use these chokes as a way of opening up an opportunity to where I can either get to a better position or I can get him to stop attacking me so that I can get back up to my feet. At the end of the day, you have to remember this. This person has to respect the choke. They can't ignore it. If they ignore it, they're going to sleep. So once they start attacking and defending your chokes, that's your opportunity to again, either move, get to a better position, or just get out of the situation altogether. So the three chokes we're gonna go over is the guillotine, the anaconda, and the darce choke. So the first choke again is gonna be the guillotine. Now again, we're in the sprawl position. It doesn't matter which hand you wanna use. A lot of times when people sprawl initially, they either have their hands free, they have a body lock, reverse seatbelt grip, or they have an inside wizard. Either way, these are all different positions and hand positioning that you that allows you to control this person. But when it comes to the choke, it's just, a, again, which hand's available. Now, again, this person's gonna be trying to push into you. They may be trying to come back up. Anytime I start working to the side, he tries to catch my leg. So I'm stuck in front of him right now. Now, I can push the head down a little bit and all I'm going to do is literally, for all these chokes, I'm looking for a reaction. So as I push his head down and he starts lifting the head back up, I'm now going to slip that hand in with the guillotine. Now I can simply just grab the chin strap or I can actually shoot the hand all the way through and get a nice deep guillotine. Either way, as soon as I'm in the process of doing this, I'm also going to start walking up and pressuring into this person. Now, I don't want to stand all the way up to my feet. It's just a quick scoop, and I'm instantly going to drop my ass right where my foot was and come right back down with a locked guillotine. Now, the key for this is that my outside leg blocks this person because, again, his defense is going to be able to jump over to the other side, and at this point, now I've just lost a guillotine. So I have to make sure that either I pull guard or I manage to get either a leg on the hip or a leg over the top of the back. So again, as he tries to hop over to the other side, he can't, and I've got the gi team completely locked from here. So once again, you've sprawled. Again, I'm pressuring the head down, this person's resisting. I snap in the gi team, I sit back right away. Now again, I can end up in guard here. I can end up with a foot trapped on the inside. If this person starts pressuring into me, I can manage to flip the person, work myself on top, and get a finished gi team from the mount position. All of those are options again, but the idea is this, you're simply just looking to slip in the guillotine, and again, he has to respect it. Now, the second choke that you can do from here is the anaconda. Now, when it comes to the anaconda and the darts, a lot of people get confused on which way the arms go. Anaconda, I'm feeding from the neck to the shoulder. The darts, we are feeding from the shoulder to the neck, so just kind of remember that for the difference. When you're doing the anaconda, the way that I like to set this up, again, doing it off the sprawl. My outside hand, I'm going to feed from the neck, Grab the back of the tricep. All I'm looking is to do this. Again, he's gonna feel this pressure. He's gonna start moving his arm out to pressure it a little bit, maybe post and make it hard. So that's where I use my other hand. If they start posting, I simply just kind of break this arm in. Now, to finish the choke, you have to get a figure four with the outside arm over the shoulder blade. It's difficult to finish in this position. So again, a lot of times I'm gonna feed under this person. However, because of this person's resistance, a lot of times I'll actually use both hands to buckle this person's arm and I will finish locking the arm once we've actually rolled through. So once we get into this position, I buckle in the arm. I'm literally going to shoot my head underneath his body. I'm not putting my head down on the mat and I'm not keeping my head on the back. I shoot it under his body. We pull him over the top. And as we come through again, now I finish with the figure four. If you need to, I can keep this arm tight here as I feed this arm a little bit more and we kind of just work the two arms to make it a little bit tighter. Now, at the same time that I'm squeezing this, I'm also slowly gonna start working my feet towards his head. And what this does, it starts compressing his chin to his chest, which again, tightens the choke a little bit more. If I notice that his arm's kind of hanging out, I can also work on trapping that as well. But the whole choke together is just locking this in, coming in nice and tight, and adding a tight squeeze as we get going. I shoot the arm through, I grab the back of the tricep, I buckle the arm, shoot my head under, and we lock it in the process, and again, start working towards the head. 
Number three is the dart stroke. Now, from this position, I need to make sure that, because again, ideally we want to work to the back. So if I start working to the back, especially if this person starts trapping your leg as I'm moving out, maybe he catches my foot on the outside, this is a good opportunity to shoot the darts in. Even if I want to stay head on and I just kind of want to drop my hip a little bit to put pressure on the shoulder, or sometimes you'll see guys pressure down on the head. Either way, I'm just trying to get the right angle that I can really get a nice deep shot with this hand and I'm going to latch on my grip together. So now I got a nice tight gable grip. I'm gonna latch it on here. Now the pressure for this motion, and again, this is just the way that I like to set up the dark choke from here, is I'm going to pressure down on the head. Same time that I pressure down the head, I'm lifting with my arm and that's gonna drop the shoulder. Now, you might think that this person's able to kind of post out. Yes, they can, but if you start doing enough head pressure and you really start jerking it, eventually the body's gonna follow because the head is getting too far tucked underneath that the body has to follow to prevent them from injuring themselves. So, I've got the lock, I start pressuring the head, I lift the shoulder, and I simply just drop them to a side. Now, yes, self-defense wise, I can easily just come and take the back from here, but again, if we're focused on the chokes from this point, I'm going to circle my way all the way around. Now I've got to the point where I've got his tricep underneath my chest. And again, from this position, feed it into a figure four. And now I'm gonna come off my knees, pressure my chest down, apply the pressure. And again, you get the tap out. Get that deep shot, latch the hands, pressure the head, elevate, work again to get the pressure behind the tricep. And again, we slip this in. One thing that I like about the three chokes that we are doing is that they all work in unison with one another. So you are able to switch them on the fly if for whatever reason they start resisting or if the one isn't working, you can easily switch it to another one. So in this example here, if we are in this dark position, let's say I start applying the pressure and maybe he rolls all the way down to his back for whatever reason and he continues to roll here maybe to try and come up. This is the perfect opportunity. Now it's gonna be very difficult for me to finish the darts from here. However, I can drop my hip, shoot this outside hand through this way and now I can lock it up for an anaconda and just start working in this way. If he decides to start bellying back down to try and resist that one, I can follow through. We come right back up with the darts. I pop it right back down and we go right back to the dart finish. You can also intertwine these chokes from the initial starting position. Again, if one doesn't work, you can easily switch up to another one. Now, in my opinion, the guillotine is the easiest to apply, especially if this person's pressuring into you. So that's usually the first one that I'm going to start with. As I'm putting on this guillotine, if he starts hand fighting me, let's say he starts pulling down the choking arm, that's the opportunity for me to take my other hand and I can feed it right through and start working onto this anaconda choke. Again, if he starts fighting with that, I can easily switch and now I can work the dart stroke and you can easily intertwine these. And again, you can even intertwine them once, as you've seen, once we actually get down to that position, they work there as well. So understand that these three chokes work great both for sport and for self-defense simply for the fact that your attacker has to respect the choke. If they ignore it, they're going to go to sleep. So it's either they're going to go to sleep or they're going to start defending the choke, which again, if you're good at the chokes, you can easily bypass that. And again, between intertwining them, you can put them to sleep or you use those chokes as an opportunity to get to a better position or work yourself back up to the feet. Because if it is self-defense related, you don't necessarily want to be fighting the person on the ground. We want to get back to our standing position to begin with. So try all three of them. Again, it's the guillotine, the darts, and the anaconda. Play with them a little bit. See how you can intertwine them. We'll see you next time. Stay safe.